Hello viewers, welcome once again to the eMath learning platform by Peter Ikaja. I am now going to take you through all level probability. This will basically be for the senior 3 and the senior 4 students. Now let's look at how to define probability, especially at ordinary level. Now, by definition, probability is the numerical value which gives a measure of the likelihood of a particular outcome at each trial. That is how we can define probability. But on top of that, we can also add on the definition of a sample space. Now, a sample space is a set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. Then, in addition to this, we can also talk about what an event is. Now, an event is simply a subset of a sample space. Now, mathematically, we need to learn that probability is given by the number of events out of the number of events in the sample space. So you simply get the number of events, then you divide by the number of events in the sample space, as we shall see in the examples that will follow. Now we have just abbreviated N of E to represent number of events and N of S to represent the number of events in the sample space. Let's look at a few examples. Number one, they're saying two fair coins are tossed. Construct a table showing all possible outcomes. That is part A. Part B, what is the probability of getting at least a tail? Now, when they say at least a tail, it means either one tail or actually more tails. So in this case, we shall see how many tails we shall have, especially from the table we shall construct uh, at part A. Now, let's look at that solution. Now, this is our simple table. Now, in this table, you are going to realize something very unique. We have one of the coins which has a head and a tail. So this is the first coin. And we have another coin here which also has a head and a tail. So when we try to pair them up, for example, we are saying if I pair this head together with this head, I will get head head. This head again paired together with this tail, I will get head tail. And this tail paired with the head will give me tail head. And finally, this tail paired with this tail will give me tail, tail. Now, you realize that our sample space is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. That, is, that will be the number of the sample space. So the number of sample space will be 4 because we have 4 events that we have come up with from both the first and the second coin. Now, let's answer the question. The question was specifically asking for the probability of at least a tail. And we said when they say the word at least, it means either that number or even more. So in other words, it means the minimum. So when you say a minimum of one tail, it means it can be either one tail or even more tails. So when we look through our events that we have here, this does not contain a tail, we shall ignore it, but this one has one tail, which qualifies. This one also has one tail, and this one has two tails. And because they said at least, we can also take two tails. So we shall take a tail and a tail, then also the two tails will be considered. So it means uh, the number of the events will now be one, two, three. So, and the sample space, we say the number is four. So it means our probability will simply be three out of four. Let's move on. To question two, they're saying a coin and irregular tetrahedron with faces numbered from one to four are tossed. Part A, construct a table showing all the possible outcomes. Part B, what is the probability of getting a tail and a number greater than one? Can we look at the solution? Now, one thing you need to understand is a tetrahedron was clearly defined to be having four faces. So we are having a tetrahedron represented by this, one, two, three, and four. So these are the faces of a tetrahedron. Then for a coin, we shall have a head and a tail. 
So that is what we shall have. Then again, when you do pair them up, this head goes with 1. So we shall have H1. Head goes with 2, H2. H3, H4. Then tail also goes with 1. So it will be T1. This will be T2. This will be T3. And finally, this will be T4. Now, when you look at the sample space, it contains 8 events. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it means the number of sample space in this case is going to be 8. But what does the question say? The question is asking for the probability of getting a tail and a number greater than 1. So it means we first look for only those events that contain tails. For example, you see there is a tail here, a tail, a tail, and a tail. But they are saying the tail should appear together with a number greater than 1. So it means we cannot consider this because they told us this number should be greater than 1. We can easily see that 2 is greater than 1, 3 is greater than 1, and 4 is greater than 1. So it means we are going to consider the 3 events. So it means the number of our events is going to be 3 out of the number of the sample space, which is 8. And that is how we get uh, this answer. Let's move on to number 3. They're saying a number is chosen from the numbers 1 to 9. Find the probability that the number chosen is a triangular number. Now, this is a very interesting number. You need to first understand what a triangular number is in this case. You should be knowing how a set of triangular numbers looks like. Now, if we are to attempt this question, I have started with the sample space first. Now, this sample space contains all numbers from 1 to 9 as we were instructed. Then within this very sample space, we are going to pick a few numbers which qualify to be triangular numbers. So when you look at the red ink, for example, 1, 3, and 6, they are actually triangular numbers. But how many are they? They are 3. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3. So it means we have 3 events or 3 elements in this case. Now, the probability they want is that we find the probability that the number chosen is a triangular number. So we simply get the number of events out of the number of the sample space. So when you do so, you'll get 3 out of 9. And that gives us 1 out of 3 if you divide through by 3 by 3. And that comes to the end of number 3 also. Now let's move on to number 4. Number four says a fair dice is tossed only once and the number which appears on its top face is noted. What is the probability that the top face shows a number greater than four? Roman two, an odd number or prime number. Now, the word O here means a lot as we shall discuss uh, in the following steps. Let's look at the solution. Now, we all know that for a dice, a dice always has six faces, and they're all numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 6. So, in other words, the number of our sample space in this case is going to be 6. Now, to answer Roman 1, they said we take that number greater than 4, and here we can only see 5 and 6, which are greater than 4. So it means the number of events is going to be 2, and the number of the sample space is going to be 6. So we shall say uh, 2 out of 6, which gives us 1 out of 3. And that becomes our, our probability that is needed in Roman 1. Roman 2, they are saying an odd number or prime number. An odd number or prime number. When they say odd or, or prime, you pick all those numbers that are odd, and even the numbers which are prime. A number may be odd, but when... Actually, I mean a number may be even when actually it is prime. So we shall also consider it. For example, 2 is actually an even number. But because it is a prime number, it has only two factors, 2 and itself. We shall also consider it in our set. 1 is an odd number, and even a prime number. 3 is odd and prime, and 5 is also odd and prime. But 2 is a special case. It is even, but remember, it is prime. So because it is a prime number, we also have it 
in our set of events. What will be the probability? It will be the number of events out of the number of the sample space. And when you do the substitution, you will get 4 out of 6, which gives you 2 out of 3 when you divide through by 2. So that gives us our solution for question 4. Let's look at our next example. Now, the next example says two dice are thrown once. Find the probability that both dice show even numbers. Interesting. Now, let's look at our solution. Now, remember, a dice has six faces. So, I'm representing one of the dice with all these figures that you see in red ink. Then another dice with these numbers represented by this color. Now, remember, if you are to now find the probability that both dice show even numbers, we simply pair them up. So this face 1 will be paired with face 1. The same face paired by face with face 2. Same face paired with face 3. So it's going to be 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, sorry, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6. When you come to this, it will also be 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4. 2, 5, 2, 6. So that is how we continue uh, filling our table. So this will be 3, 1. The other one will be 3, 2, 3, 3, and so on. When you come to 4, 1, 4, 2, and so on, it is still the same concept until you finish up your table. Now, this time around, we have some wider sample space. Why? Because our events are going to be these ones that we have inside here. All these ones that you see, except the ones that represent our dice. So the first dice is represented by this, and the other one is also represented by this. So you don't consider the ones in red ink and the ones in this purple ink. So we only look at the ones inside. So if you count them, you will realize that they are actually 36. So it means the sample space for two dice which are tossed together will be... 36. What are we going to do here? We're simply now going to answer the question, but they are saying they show even numbers. Now, when you look at all these pairs, you will realize that this 2, 2, which has both numbers even, 2, 4, 2, 6, 4, 2, 4, 4, 4, 6, 6, 2, 6, 4, and 6, 6. When you find out about the others, you realize that at least one of them will be odd. But the ones that you see in this ink, which are kind of unique, are the ones that are actually even. Remember they said both dice show even numbers. So you should have an even number and an even number. Wherever you have an even and an odd number, you ignore that. So after that, which if you count them, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it means our probability will be 9 out of 36, which simplifies to 1 out of 4 when you divide through by 9. So this brings us to the end of our examples. And with the knowledge you should have got from this, I now believe you can confidently try the exercise uh, below. So this is our exercise. And after this, I believe you can now allow me. Thank you so much. Please, may God bless you. And remember to visit my YouTube channel, eMath Learning Platform. And make sure you subscribe to always keep receiving updates whenever I upload new content. Bye-bye.